fellow brawlers, I'm Kairos Time, and it's time for the Meg Olympics. Meg is the newest legendary brawler coming to Brawl Stars, and she is a damage dealer. Not a fighter like Surge, not a support like Max, not even a sharpshooter like Colt. She's just a damage dealer. I hope you guys have been saving a lot of boxes, because you're going to need them if you want to add her to your collection. She's the third and final member of the superhero trio, and she belongs to the Super City environment. Meg repairs energy drink vending machines, but she dreams of being a superhero like Max and Surge. Max is pretty sure she's too weak to join battle, so Meg built a mecha robot named Rob so she could handle the other brawlers. Rob, don't stop. Oh, this is so exciting. <laughs> I did it. Stick around at the end of the video for all of her voice lines. Main attack, clean up. Now, the actual description for this attack is that she fires a short burst from her blaster that pokes at her enemy's patience, which I think is a great way to describe this attack because it deals so little damage. However, she reloads fast and can attack from a long distance away, which means that this attack will be very annoying. But unfortunately for her, that's pretty much all it's going to be. Meg Super, Mega Machina. Meg jumps into her mecha for some colossal carnage. It does take Meg one second for her to get suited up, and she's completely vulnerable during this time. If she does survive while suiting up, her her mecha will give her 7,000 temporary HP that will completely change the way that Meg plays. While in her mecha, the health will decay 2% from her max HP every second, which means that she can survive for 50 seconds if it doesn't take any damage and she isn't healed from some other source. Speaking of which, teammates can heal her mecha, but the healing that it receives is nerfed by 80%. Once her mecha is destroyed, Meg hops out of it fully loaded with ammo, and she'll have just as much HP as when she first got into the mecha. By the way, I tested the hitbox for Meg's mecha, and it's not any bigger than Frank's, who currently has the largest hitbox in the game. These shots look like they should hit Meg's mecha, but they don't. Rob's mecha attack, crowd control. While in her mecha, Meg's attack is a strong barrage of bullets that deal decent damage. They're fired very wide from each other, but if the enemy target is lined up perfectly, she can deal max damage against other brawlers. One thing that's interesting is that the projectiles are wide enough that they can actually be fired on opposite sides of objects, like cacti in showdown or even some thin walls. This is unlikely to happen in actual combat, but I did find it kind of funny. Rob's mecha super, feel the steel. Meg's mecha has its own super. It swipes a giant laser sword that deals an insane amount of damage, very similar to the attack pattern that BB has. However, it deals a lot more damage. This super is different from every other super in the game because it does not charge up from hitting enemy brawlers. Instead, it slowly charges up over five seconds, and this means that her mecha's super cannot recharge itself if it happens to hit multiple targets like a lot of other supers can. She has to wait for it to charge up again. Meg's gadget, jolting volts. When Meg activates this gadget, she'll heal the mecha by 450 health every second for 5 seconds. That's an additional 2,258 HP, which will help her stay in the mecha longer. First star power, force field. This star power gives Meg a shield for 30 seconds after her mecha is destroyed. That's right. 30 seconds for her shield. Plus, the shield reduces damage by 35%, which is pretty significant. That's enough shielding to give her the equivalent of 4,738 HP, which is basically as much HP as Colette, Griff, and Penny. Meg's second star power, self-destruction. This star power makes it so that when Meg's mecha suit runs out of HP, it will explode and deal 1,000 damage to nearby opponents, as well as push them away up to three tiles. This will help Meg get out of a tough spot if the enemy is a bit too close and takes out her mecha. Now that you have a good understanding of Meg's and her mecha's mechanics, try saying that three times fast, we're gonna put her through a bunch of tests to see how she compares to every brawler in the game. As always, we're gonna start with her worst test and work our way up to her best test where she really thrives. Then we'll talk about how strong I think she's going to be in every single mode, and honestly, I think you might actually be surprised at what I have to say. Because Meg is absolutely a new brawler. <laughs> <laughs> the box test. Meg takes dead last in the box test because supers aren't allowed in this test. She has to take out every single box by herself with her own regular attack. And it takes her eight ammo to take out that first box. Eight ammo, that is insane. And although it does get better as she progresses, it takes her an entire one minute, 50 seconds to break all 16 boxes. That's one second worse than Jean and suggests that she's not very good at ramping up in solo showdown. With that said though, if she ignores boxes and goes 
goes straight for the enemy to charge her super off, she might actually be okay if she can survive with her super charged up. The super range test. It should come as no surprise that Meg does not do very well in the super range test. Her regular super has zero range, but luckily she has her mecha super, which has a range of three and two third tiles, which places her in 45th out of all the brawlers. For reference, that is one third tile longer than BB's attack, and it actually attacks a little bit further than it looks like. The assassin test. The assassin test measures how much damage a brawler can deal in three seconds to a single target. Since Meg's regular attack deals so little damage, and it takes her a whole second for her to equip her mecha, she's just better off attacking straight from her mecha. She can unload three ammo in this time, which is enough to deal 8,064 damage, and that's similar to what Jesse and Max can deal in three seconds, and puts Meg in 35th place for the assassin test. The swarm test. Meg gets a bit of an unfair advantage because she starts out in her mecha, and the first thing she does is fire off her mecha super. She then attacks attacks the top row of bots and finishes off the last set of bots once her second super charges up again. She's able to clear the swarm in 7.2 seconds, which puts her in 28th for the swarm test. Just for reference, that's similar to what Bo and Penny can do in this test, and I have a feeling she's not actually going to be that great at dealing with multiple enemies. The boss test. Meg starts out without her super, but she quickly charges it up after firing all of her ammo. Because her mecha starts off fully loaded, she's able to deal a fair amount of damage right at the start, but she has to wait 5 seconds for her to use her second super, since it doesn't charge like normal supers do. The reason why it did not use her Jolting Volts gadget is because it actually makes it so that her mech stays alive the entire time, and the better option is actually to let her mecha die so she can get the extra 1000 damage from her self-destruction star power, and then when the mecha is destroyed, Meg is fully loaded on ammo, and she can quickly recharge her super, get into a new mech, which also starts fully loaded. Meg's able to take out the boss in 57 seconds, which is similar to what 8-Bit and Mr. P can do. This places her in 26th place, and suggests it she'll be pretty average at dealing damage over the course of an entire match. And if you don't have her mecha, she'll definitely be below average. From this point on, Meg is better than over half of the brawlers in the game, and we still have 10 tests to cover. With that said, Meg kind of gets to cheat because she gets to choose the best from either herself or her mecha, so she's kind of weird like that. The race test. Now, Meg's mecha has a normal movement speed like most brawlers, which means that her mecha would place in 30th place and tie with several other brawlers for that place. However, normal Meg has a fast fast movement speed, like a lot of the tanks in the game, so she does a bit better at the race test. She can clear it in 11.5 seconds, which ties her with Rosa and Frank, because neither of them have additional abilities that help them do any better at the race test. The Area Test Normal Meg gets a score of 18, since her regular attack clears 18 skulls and her super doesn't clear any. This would place her in 50th out of the 51 brawlers in the game, but her mecha's attack can clear an impressive 29 skulls, and its super can clear 42 skulls. This means that Meg scores similarly to Amber and Barley when it comes to area control, and she takes 22nd place. The Attack Range Test Meg's mecha has an attack range of 8 and 2 third tiles, which is actually pretty long. Meg's regular attack reaches 1 third tile further for a clean attack range of 9 tiles. This places her in 22nd for attack range, which ties her with Bow and Colette. The Level 25 Siege Bot Test now, Meg starts out by firing three normal projectiles before suiting up, so she can just take advantage of that tiny amount of damage that she can deal. Then Meg's mecha uses its attacks and super to deal damage, and its gadget to heal up just a bit. She ends up sacrificing Rob to blow up the boss, thanks to her second star power, and unfortunately for Meg, she doesn't stand a chance, and she gets taken out before she can even run away. That's still enough for her to take out the boss with the remaining 32% health on the Ike turret against the level 25 siege bot, and that ties her with Jesse, Piper, Ems, and Buzz, for 21st place, which tells me she's actually going to be pretty good at defense in Siege. The Super Damage Test Obviously, Meg's first super doesn't deal any damage, but her second super deals 3,360 damage, which is the 16th highest damaging super in the game. It's right between what Spike and Barley can do with their supers if an enemy stands in them for the whole time, except all that damage hits you almost instantly for Meg. The Three Attack Test With three of Meg's normal attacks, she's able to deal 2,520 damage, which means she can't even throw shot tick. I would say that she's dead last, except technically Amber loses because of a technicality. However, Meg's mecha can deal 8,064 damage with three attacks, which is similar to what Leon and Ems can do with three attacks. That places her in 12th, and with three attacks from her mecha, she can take out almost every single brawler in the game. However, you do have to line up your shots absolutely perfectly for this to happen, so that's unlikely to happen in an actual match. The Reload Test 
Meg's normal attack has a very fast reload speed. She's able to completely unload and reload 10 attacks in 15.2 seconds, which gives her an effective reload speed of 1.5 seconds per ammo. This ties her with Gale for 11th place, and her reload speed is pretty much just as fast as Frank's and BB's reload speeds. In case you're curious, Meg's mecha takes 23.2 seconds to complete this test, which ties it with Leon and Bo for 46th, meaning you really want to conserve her mecha's ammo. The Dive Test for this test, Meg starts out in her mecha and immediately activates her gadget so that she can survive one additional shot from the Ike turret. This buys the mecha enough time to get close enough to the turret so it will actually take damage from her second star power. But then before Meg dies, she quickly unloads her three attacks and all of this results in a combined 11,584 damage or 34%, which is actually very impressive. This is similar to what Terra, Nani, and Pam can do, which suggests that Meg is actually going to be pretty good at handling high pressure situations. She she might actually be really good in Siege as well. The Survival Test Meg starts off this test with her mecha and spamming her gadget right from the start so that she can buy just enough time to use her gadget all three times before the mecha ends up getting destroyed. The timing does need to be perfect or the mecha will die before receiving that final heal from that final gadget. Now the reason why I used her mecha right from the beginning is because when it dies, Meg is left with however much HP she had before she suited up. And thanks to her first star power, she can shield some extra hits after her mecha is gone. She's able to survive for 40.5 seconds, which ties her with Poco, Sprout, and Rosa for 6th place in the survival test, which is actually pretty crazy because she ties for Tick with the lowest HP in the game. Up next, we have Meg's best Olympics event, which I think is going to surprise you, and we'll talk about how strong I think she's going to be. The Supercharge Test Meg requires 6 hits from her main attack to charge up her super. She can do that with 3 ammo, and she has a super fast unload speed, which means that she can completely charge her super in 0.9 seconds. That ties her with Leon and surge for the fourth fastest charging super in the game, which is surprising because her super is so strong. With that said, her mecha requires five seconds to charge its super, which is actually the sixth slowest charging super in the game. And that's just proof that Meg is a little weird. Sometimes she's the best at one thing, and then the next moment she's the worst at that same exact thing. Which is why I wanted to talk about how strong I think she's going to be in every single game mode. First up, we have gem grab. Now, even though Meg's mecha has a lot of health, I don't think that Meg will be a very good gem carry because once her mecha is destroyed, she has very little health, and it's too risky for her to be carrying gems, even with her shield. But it's actually easier to charge Meg's super than I initially thought it would. And once she does, I can see her being able to make aggressive pushes on the enemy's team to allow her team to gain some control on the map. And that's why I think she's going to be an A-tier brawler for gem grab. I also think she's going to be an A-tier brawler in Brawl Ball. Meg has a fast reload speed, which means she's going to be able to easily fire the ball without having to worry about reloading. She has a fast movement speed, meaning she's going to be able to dodge shots and get around the field pretty well. And her mecha has a lot of health, and those are all good things for her to have in order for her to get the ball past the goal line. Her mecha also charges its super on its own and gives Meg a free super shot every five seconds just from walking around. I also think that most of the Brawl Ball maps have a lot closer range combat right now, which is where Meg's mecha really thrives thanks to its really strong super. I think Meg is a B tier brawler for heist. Meg is hardly going to deal any damage at all to the safe without her mecha. With her mecha, she has eight projectiles that deal a lot of damage and a very high damaging super, which means that mecha can deal a lot of damage to the safe in burst periods when it does have all of its ammo reloaded. But Meg is just so dependent on her mecha in this game mode that I just can't put her anywhere above the B tier, especially because she's going to struggle so much on defense. With her mecha not being able to heal much on its own, and the safe always spawning close to the enemy team, it seems like the mecha could get easily destroyed near the safe, and if Meg is left on the safe with no super, it's not likely she's going to win. For Siege, I'm going to give Meg a B tier, maybe A tier, but I'm going to stick with B tier for right now. The first few moments in Siege are really important, and it might be really tough for her to charge up her super at the start. Once Meg does charge her super, and if the enemy spawns a robot or she needs to go for a dive, she can do pretty well, but her mech is going to get destroyed pretty quickly, and most likely it's going to be difficult for her to recharge her super and get into the middle of the map and establish control. If she does have her super and she does have control, then she is going to be very difficult to deal with because she's going to be really threatening and her super can deal so much damage if you get too close. If you have her mech up a lot, I think she'll be pretty good in Siege, but otherwise she's just not going to be very good at all. I'm going to put her in the C tier for Bounty. Meg's mecha obviously has no problem defeating brawlers and can rack up 
up a pretty good bounty. However, she has to be somewhat close to an enemy for her to be able to hit her shots, and she's outranged by a lot of the best bounty brawlers, and most of them can take her out in just two ammo. Even if she does get her supercharged up, it's unlikely that she's going to be able to actually deal damage with her mecha, because enemies will just target it and get rid of its HP pretty quickly. I think Meg is going to be an A tier brawler for Hot Zone. I think the mecha super really shines in this game mode. It covers a large portion of the Hot Zone, so nobody inside the zone will be able to leave it without getting destroyed. Plus, we've already seen that Meg actually has some pretty good survivability, which is good for getting a few extra seconds inside the zone. For Knockout, I'm going to put her in the B tier for now. This is another game mode that I think is kind of a toss up for Meg because in a 1v1 situation, she either dies really quickly or she charges her super just in time to gain a ton of health and then obliterate her opponent. It's nice that Meg can stay alive after her mecha is destroyed, so an opponent might have to burst through two or three actual mechas before actually knocking Meg out. But then again, it all depends on her getting her first super and playing it very safe without it. For Solo Showdown, I'm putting her in the C tier. As we've seen, Meg cannot open up boxes early game, which means she's going to really struggle in Solo Showdown. She's better off actually going off against another enemy and trying to 1v1 them and charging her super without dying, but that itself can be really risky because she has so little HP. If if she is able to do that and charges up her super and somehow takes out that enemy, then she can use that time with her mecha to go and get rid of a bunch of boxes and power herself up. And at that point, she could do pretty well, but I still think she's not actually going to be that great. Duo Showdown is a little bit better for her, so I'm going to put her in the B tier. Having a partner will allow Meg to get some good power ups and will allow her to be able to attack enemy brawlers from a little bit more of a safe distance. It seems like everything Meg really struggles in Solo Showdown can kind of be fixed by having a teammate with her, and I also think that having the right brawler team comp, like a brawler that can heal her mecha, could actually be a really strong combo and could allow Meg to do pretty well in Duo Showdown. Next, I wanted to show you Meg's pins, which are starting out animated. I'm going to do my outro now while I show them to you, and then after I'm done, I'm going to play all of her voice lines, so stick around for that because she's got a great personality. In the meantime, comment below and let me know what you think of Meg. Make sure you subscribe for more Brawl Stars content, use code Kairos in the Brawl Stars shop, and for now, this is Kairos time ticking by, and we will see you in Brawl Stars. Also, let me know what you think I should do for my Meg unboxing video. Video. Incorrect! There must be a glitch! Debugging! Not part of the manual! Need to recalibrate! I did it! Textbook takedown! Yeah! Trust the process! Did I really do that? Tech for the win! Out of the lab and into the lead! Numbers don't lie! I'm winning! Oh, last time I fired my gun, I was at the academy! I'm so ready for this. Woohoo! Oh, this is so exciting. <laughs> hey, wait for me. Good to go. Meet Rob. Tech upgrade enabled. Engaging mech mode. Tech support 2.0. Robot rampage. Rob, don't stop. Robot mode. Ugh, I must improve. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Violation. I'll get my butt. Paralysis through analysis. Time to reboot.